Hi guys, in this video we're going to be discussing energy and work. We'll be calculating work done, looking at examples of work done, and then we'll finish with a summary. So let's start by talking about the relationship between energy and work. We know that most physical processes involve energy being transferred between energy stores. For example, if we throw a ball, we are converting the chemical energy in our muscles into the kinetic energy of the ball. So physical processes involve transfer between energy stores, and we've said that work is related to energy transfers, but now let's say exactly what it is. The work done is the energy transferred when a force moves an object through a distance. So this means that whenever we put in effort to move something, we are doing work. It's also worth noting that if you go back through the chain of any set of energy transfers to the first thing, usually you see that initially an energy source such as food or fuel will be required. Now if we want to calculate the work done, then we need more than the definition that we just gave, we're going to need a formula for it. Well, when a force moves an object for a certain distance, we can calculate the work done by this force. So in this picture, let's imagine that we exert a force on this block. Then if it's moving in the direction that we're exerting the force, then it's this distance here that we're interested in. Now let's give the equation for work in terms of the force and the distance moved in the direction of the force. The work done is equal to the force multiplied by the distance. And now let's take a look at the units of the quantities in this equation. Well, we know that force is measured in newtons. We know that distance is measured in meters. Finally, the work done, we agreed, is an energy transfer, so it is measured in joules. Now we must remember that the distance that we're interested in is the distance that an object has moved in the direction of the force. So reminding ourselves of our original example, when we are pushing a block along a table, if we're asking what is the work done by this force, then we multiply that force by the distance the block has moved in that direction. The point I'm going to get to here is that not all forces do work. For example, there are other forces on this block. For example, there is the force of gravity that pulls the block downwards. In other words, the weight of the block. But remember, in our example, the block is moving along the table and it's not moving up or down. Since the block doesn't move any distance in the direction of the force of gravity or the weight, the force of gravity or weight does no work. Okay, now we've got this idea, let's have a go at calculating the work done by a force. Let's imagine a box is pushed along a frictionless table by a constant horizontal force of 5 newtons. We want to calculate the work done on the block when it has moved a distance of 1.5 metres in the direction of the force. That feels like a lot of information, so let's pick out the key parts of this question we know there's a constant horizontal force of 5 newtons. We want to know the work done, and we know it's moved a distance of 1.5 metres and in the direction of the force. Okay, so we have the distance and we have the force, so we can calculate the work done using our equation. Our equation says that the work done is equal to the force multiplied by the distance the object has moved in the direction of the force. Next we need to check the units of the quantities we've been given. Well the force is given to be 5 newtons and we wanted our force to be in newtons so this is already good. Also we wanted the distance to be in meters and we've been given that the distance moved was 1.5 meters so both of our quantities are already in the correct units. This means we're ready to plug our numbers into the equation. Doing this we find that the work done is equal to the force multiplied by the distance and finally putting this into a calculator to get our answer gives that the work done is equal to 7.5 joules. Now let's take a look at some real life examples of work being done. And remember the work done is simply the energy transferred when a force acts on an object. 
Let's start by thinking about the example of a person pushing a trolley. Let's go right back to the start and talk about all of the energy transfers that have led to eventually the person being able to push the trolley. Well, the initial energy source way, 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 way back was food. It was the food that gave our muscles chemical energy that allows them to function. So for example, here by eating this pie here, the person gives themselves chemical energy. So what do we do with all of this chemical energy? Well, the chemical energy in the muscles of our arms is the thing that is then transferred into the kinetic energy store of our arms as we push. So in this picture, we're imagining that we use the chemical energy to be able to move our arms backwards and forwards, giving them kinetic energy. Since we are holding the trolley, this kinetic energy goes into the kinetic energy of the trolley. So all in all, energy is being transferred from this chemical energy store into the kinetic energy store of the trolley, making it move. So here we imagine the transfer from the chemical energy of our muscles into the kinetic energy of the trolley. Notice that the trolley is moving in particular in the direction of the force that we're exerting on it. So work is being done. Let's look at some numbers now. If the person pushes a trolley with a force of 500 newtons and it moves four meters, and if there is a frictional force of 210 newtons throughout, how much work is done over the four meters? Well, the force that we're going to want to use in our equation for the work is the resultant force. So our first step is going to be to draw a free body diagram to find the resultant force. We know that there is a force of 500 newtons pushing the trolley forwards, and there is a frictional force of 210 newtons, which resists this motion. Well, using this free body diagram, we can see that the resultant force is going to be equal to the 500 newtons minus the 210 newtons, giving a resultant force of 290 newtons. The next thing we need to do is to write down the relevant equation. And we're trying to calculate the work done. So the relevant equation is the work is equal to the resultant force multiplied by the distance the object has moved through in the direction of this force. Now we are ready to substitute in our values, which give the work done is equal to the resultant force, which was 290 newtons, multiplied by four meters, which was the displacement. Finally, we're going to want to put this calculation into a calculator to compute the answer, which gives that the work done is equal to 1,160 joules. Therefore, the amount of energy that has been transferred into the kinetic energy store of the trolley is 1,160 joules. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the SnapRevise smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.